I extend your okay. Um, uh, can you? Do you, do you have it? Oh yes. Can you yeah. send it to me? Yeah. With email? So go compose I, an I can, Yeah, I can invite you. No 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 no. I want um, just email, email me. Go to the can you Which one? No, you that's the that, that's the right link. The new one? Give us a link. Oh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Go to IRC. Go to IRC. It's on IRC. Yeah, yeah, okay. IRC. Go to IRC. Sorry, guys, we're beginning in two minutes. Go to lock okay. lock slash uh yeah, let me let me write sorry Fedora lock no oh. no no A E C T R yeah E C T R yeah no ah E C T R lock ah sorry yeah, it's ECTR. ECTR, yes. Yeah, Andrew. No? ECTR. Which one? I don't know. Maybe it's. Hello. Maybe it's the wrong server, IRC server. Three notes from the stack. Yeah, yeah they, they uh, we just want to share the the URL. Let me do something. Okay, this so is when did you finish yesterday? When they kicked us off. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, they they closed everything at two a.m. Okay. And at two a.m. suddenly there's a big rush on the street because everybody takes off. Yeah. Everywhere. And then all the people go for some food to buy. So for pizza or pizza shops uh, are open till so three a.m. Or can no longer set up? Wait, wait, wait! No, 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 no
I'm Christos Makarakis, and today we're going to talk about the Fedora Ambassador program. Generally, the, the program, the mentoring uh, program we have, and uh, we're going to collaborate regarding the program. We're, we're going to discuss, and I want to give have an open discussion regarding the program, program how we can, uh, how we can um, uh, change it if we like, how we can make improvements in the program. Uh, so, let's see about the state of the program right now. In the beginning, we were a few guys, we were a few friends, we were a small amount of ambassadors. So it was really easy to collaborate, to uh, communicate, organize things. It was really easy and really fun. We were some, like a bunch of friends uh, who were talking on IRC, who were discussing. <coughs> we, were, we, were, we were small family, but we were friends. And it was really easy to do things. And the things were rolling out really good at that. And we're having a lot, a lot of fun. Right, right Christopher? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> I like how you how you touch me. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is not. We're not all about those, but this is a general picture. A general picture of how the program is right now. Where a lot of people, which is not bad, which is not bad, but we lost the 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 friends, a lot of friends. It was the, the campus we had back there. I mean were so many, so eventually we can't know each other, everyone. I mean, I don't know every ambassador from uh, the US. I don't know every ambassador from, from Africa. I don't know every ambassador in my region. And a um, few years ago, I knew them because we were only 20 ambassadors in the India region. Um, so we're a lot. We can't really go really easily, but we do, we do. Uh, and the thing we have nowadays, um, uh, we have a, a situation that raised up uh, in the past, and there are a lot of in a lot of lists, a lot of mail lists, like the uh, call, like the members list, but we have a lot of inactive ambassadors, which is not really good. We have a lot of inactive ambassadors, and what we can do that? Uh, we're discussing quality about quantity. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of ambassadors. Uh, we have quality ambassadors. We have, uh, we have uh, inactive ambassadors. Uh, my proposition, especially for inactive ambassadors, is to do it. I mean, we have to come up someday and say, hey guys, it's over. I mean, you're not doing anything the past years. I mean, we have to come up eventually. And tell them that we have a unique, I mean, there's no need to be an ambassador. We have a lot, a lot of uh, other sessions, other programs where we can contribute. But we're going to elaborate on that later. Uh, like a mentor, a few of us in here were, were mentors. I guess I would have to be more strict. We have to, to be more strict, especially. If, even if there are friends of ours, of ours, we have to be strict with them. We have to, during the mentoring process, we have to make um, to to make the process, the mentoring process, a little bit harder. And how we're gonna do that? You know, the mentoring process is really good. It's really great. It's working. It's working. It's awesome. Especially, uh, we had some uh, developments regarding. The, uh, the, 
the standard of, of uh, FAT. And now it's really working. It's really great. Uh, but generally, the mentoring process, we can, we can do some more improvements. For example, we can change the user interface at the joining of the of uh, one of your enter to be signing up for being an ambassador. But we're going to discuss it later with some examples. I mean, for example, when I go on to go to apply for an ambassador, the whole user interface, the whole information is not pretty clear. It's not clear enough. Another proposal we could discuss is the approbation. I mean, we could have, for example, some uh, ambassador's information. Say, hey guys, I think this is a thumbs up. I approve you for being an ambassador, but you have two months, for example, in probation in order to make things, to make stuff, to organize events. Because I, the past year I'm in a, in a mentor, I come up with uh, some cases where the, my mentees came up and they told me, hey, I want you to be my mentor. I want, I'm from that uh, country. I want to do, to do that and that and that and that. But in order to do this, I want to be an ambassador. Okay, okay, let, let's start the mentoring process with making an interview, second interview, third interview. I found I found him really informed about the project and I sponsored him. But after two months, I, he's inactive, really inactive. He didn't do any of the events he pro not promised, he was he felt that he's going to do. So I will so uh, in that case I believe that we could have a probation for a month, for two months, for three months, may, may, maybe, in order to see if they're going to be active, free active, which is really important. Uh, another thing, based on the little experience I have as a mentor, is that the language is a barrier. It's a barrier. It's a really important thing. Okay, we don't want, we don't need all our masters to speak really good English because we're not interested to have uh, all of our ambassadors in an uh, event like Fortran. Uh, but we want them to be active, really, really informed in, in about the draft project in the gallery. Uh, so, the thing is that some ambassadors, some, uh, some ambassadors, they don't know really good English. So the mentoring process is really hard. For example, uh, we don't have a mentor in Russia. And generally, the Russian uh, people don't I know really good English. I have an example of mine uh, left in my letter, my latest DVD. So we can't really discuss, we can't we can't do the interview really good, really well. It's it was like I don't know. I had to have to be translated with me, I had to have to be translated with me often, so it's really hard. So I guess we we'll have to have some mentors from some regions at least one mentor per region, per country, I guess for big countries like Russia, in order to make the process more easily, more, uh, more easy to make uh, the joining process of Russian ambassadors or ambassadors from other countries better. <laughs> and that's really important because when you're going to join a community, you have to have a person where you can communicate better and we can communicate better in people in my native language group. So it's it's better to do that. Another thing is that um, when well when you are a Fedora ambassador, you are you are a representative of the Fedora project. So you have to know how the project operates, how it's structured, the whole uh, special groups it has, the other groups of people it has other sub-projects, you have to know everything about the Fedora project. And what is the better way to learn, to, to know the Fedora project, than from visiting the Fedora project. So, I guess like mentors, we have to, um, we have to uh, not accept, we have to empower the young people who want to be ambassadors first to contribute to other projects. For example, marketing project, for example, the design project, or everywhere they can. I mean, that's the best, the best way to learn the project, to learn everything about the project, and then to apply for being an ambassador. 
because nowadays they are flying with, with not knowing anything about the project. They just want to be an ambassador, which is okay, but it's not the best and it's not the most of the, the ultimate. Another solution regarding the mentoring process that this lovely lady Len, right? Len, proposed proposed uh, yesterday that Tatika's uh, session was to have training. Was to have was to train our ambassador, which is good, which is great. I find it a great idea because she proposed, for example, to have she's doing that for Red Hat. She proposed to have, for example, two months two months of training to put some action items to our young ambassadors and say that, hey guys, in these two months, you have to do that and that and that and that. And if the ambassadors are willing to do that and will do that, <coughs> they are good to be an ambassador. If not, they're not. The person who is going to invest time and work in order to learn, in order to read, and in order to do things about the, uh, the, uh, the program, is going to be an ambassador. This is great and this is really useful because we're going to uh, uh, distinguish, distinguish the, the, lazy ambassador, the lazy ambassadors from the, the people who want to be an ambassador and they're, they're chasing for that. But let's take the joining process from the beginning. Not only for the ambassador's program, but generally for joining the 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 Fedora project. I mean all of these sub projects. They know the, the joining project process has to be easy, fast, and providing all the necessary information for the team you want to join in. Our great <laughs> new site is a really good hub in providing all the new the necessary information. It's really well designed, it's really awesome, useful, but here we can see the community section of FedoraProject.org and if you want to apply to join Fedora, you can have to just click and select a role inside Fedora. But what comes when people in it? A whole different interface appears, which is really not the best solution, the best uh, interface, and it comes up with a lot of information, which is, from my point of view, it's not really good. It's not really clear all this information, and um, it's a whole different ecosystem. I mean, we have this, that, and suddenly we have that. So I'm decided to be an ambassador. I'm moving forward. I have, I can see a lot of teams, team ambassadors, phones, uh, SIG, games, SIG, team media, which is not relevant with the people person. Really much, but okay. I'm applied. I'm applying to be an ambassador. But first, when someone is willing to be an ambassador, what he does, he just follows the steps on the wiki. On the wiki, if you click the ambassadors, it's going to guide you through the steps in order to be an ambassador. My opinion is that first you have to identify your local community. I see a lot of communities. They are planning to be an ambassador and they don't know the status of the local community. So, a really nice uh, portal in order to find the status of your local community is the Fedora Communities. It's a really great user interface, it's a really great uh, portal where you can find all the necessary information about the, the lo your local community. But, it's not a, it's not a really a easily accessible site. It's not other Fedora project at all. It's not linked in an easy way from the Fedora project at all. It's not linked from the community. It's really it's a hidden URL. I mean, Fedora has an issue. We have a, we have the information. We have all the information documented in our wiki, but it's really hidden. For example, yesterday I was looking to find the members of uh, Armstrong, their names, and they were anywhere. Finally, I found that. They were under the you know, uh, Fedora, uh, Fedora 2013 uh, elections nominations. That was the result. Why? I mean, they have to be a transcript. I mean, we have all the information, but it's 
hidden. So we have to connect them. Maybe we have to redesign our portals, we have to redesign um, our main site, developers.com, and link to that awesome, really beautiful site. And let's go back to, to our uh, local list. I mean, okay, I found my local community. I can get in touch with them. But let me try to find uh, from them further ambassador. After I Google search, and I mean it, I Google search, I come up with this site, which is the country list of all the ambassadors of the program. Here in Greece, we have nine ambassadors. Some of them are really outdated. I mean, that's why I want to, to delete some people. I, I can change my community. We have some ambassadors that they are inactive. They are not uh, active in the project for the past three years. So I think it's a really logic, uh, really uh, logic time, logical time uh, to delete them, I guess. And we have to come up with a solution about that. Where is the, when is the time to delete someone? And under uh, which circumstances? Um, so, I came up with that uh, page where you can find all the ambassadors in your country, which is not linked, linked to the previous page, which is wrong. So, I guess I'm, propo I'm, pro I'm actually proposing I have created a model for that to have a country list with the ambassadors, not only the ambassadors, but with the contributors as well. We could have something like that. It's a mock up I created for LinkedIn. It's not a really actual uh, working site, but we can do that. It's a country list, it's a map, and while you search for Greece, you can add all your uh, ambassadors or all the contributors, because having, your co having the contributors from your country is really uh, helpful as well. Because not only ambassadors, we can find a contributor in your, in your city, and we can contact them and have a coffee, and not learn everything about the kind of project, which is great. So I'm proposing to have to create a new uh, portal with uh, a mockup like that, a user interface like that, where you can search, uh, you can take the all the necessary information from a pass and you can search for the ambassadors or the contributors on your country, on your region, in order to have a really smooth and a really uh, uh, a really good uh, experience while joining the ambassador course program. program. So, you're an ambassador. You and when that went the mentor, the mentorship process. What's next? I mean, okay. Like uh, like mentors to mentor the first one, and what's the next? Don't we have to contact them? To See what's going on? Yes. Here's the contact. I, my proposal, not my proposal, uh, my idea, my thought is to, we have to contact them at least every six months, for example, depends on the first person, and check the status. What's going on? Give us everything okay? Do we have what we need in order to run the event? Do you need, do you have any? Do you have any questions, any thoughts about that? Hey, what's up? Just a friendly mail uh, for heads up. Nothing, nothing more, nothing less. So you can build a really personal relationship with the person, which is really great because you're going to be a friend with someone in the other uh, under, under in the world, which is great. Another thing, especially for young ambassadors, are really in the project and they don't know what to do later. I mean, they are ambassadors, what to do next. Uh, it would be really helpful, helpful if we had a QA. We had uh, some centralized information about uh, standard some standard procedures, what to do here, what to do there, what we're going to do in that, um, in that case or in that case. It's really great, so we don't really need uh, to, uh, it, it saves us for a lot of uh, QA in person with emails, and we upstream the information in order to uh, other young ambassadors to find the information. For example, what, what I do in order, 
I have an event and I I have Slack I have Slack, but how do I request uh, from uh, from a school or from uh, someone else a place in order to do my release event? Some really easy information on how to do that. So um, so a central hub of information, it's going to be really helpful, especially for events like Statica, like uh, Statica's uh, session two days ago, we discussed about uh, a, a box of standard of um, I can't remember the word exactly. It's, it was a hub of all the the graphical graphics, not graphics, graphic resources someone is going to need for having a having a event, right? So that's Oh. Hmm. Hmm. Not my note. <laughs> so um, I have with all the information regarding uh, Slack, regarding uh, graphics, regarding posters, everything is going to help a lot of young ambassadors. Um, and when we come to events. Special young ambassadors say that, hey, I want to make an event, I want money. No, you don't need money. The only thing you have need is to request from some uh, media or some slug that you have at, uh, in our inventory. And then we have to request uh, a space from your local university, your local hackerspace, your local uh, school. And they're going to provide you, probably. I mean, but what are we doing in a lot of countries nowadays and it's working? And you're going to have your release event. It's not really hard to run an event. You don't need money, you don't need a lot of resources, you don't need anything. You just need, you just have to do that. I'm especially telling that for young ambassadors because they're not they are afraid of running an event because they think that's really hard. You have to tell them, remind them every day, every week, in every meeting, but Hey guys, it's really easy. Just step on and do that. So here comes the end of my presentation, and it's time to have some end remarks, and it's time to have some discussion on that. How we can work on that? So how we can work uh, on the on the process? What are we going to do with inactive ambassadors? Ah, please don't be ready. <laughs> ah, you just open the can of walls, I think. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> dig in and dig in. Yeah. Uh, cool yeah. Um, I wanted to do that here because we're uh, the fans call is here. No, I mean, not the whole fans call, but at least four members of it. Yes, missing. I think there's one more. Yes. Alejandro. Mm, no, I mean, who's okay? Yeah, we are not here. Okay. Um, generally, I don't see the need for declaring people as inactive. They are declared, they are inactive on a technical level already if they don't change their passwords in time. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you need to change your pass yes. password. If you don't do this, you become inactive. Maybe we can implement this on the country listing website. But in general, I see no reason to remove the uh, ambassador's status. Or I mean, are you trying to? Are you suggesting we should remove the group group membership of the ambassadors? Group? Yes. Okay, that's something I totally disagree. Um, we have, think of, for example, Jens Kriegel. He's one of our oldest ambassadors. He has been around since 2005 or something. He's not really active. You don't see him on a mailing list. Um, I, I don't, probably the last email he wrote to the mailing list was probably like two years ago or something. But um, he comes to Linux Tag. Every year, he does a very good job there. Um, he is a very experienced ambassador. He doesn't need briefing or something. It's almost uh, yeah. He shows up, does his job, and then he disappears for another year. Basically. Yeah, that's that's, that's okay. Um, it's really okay. 
I'm not talking about belief. belief. Some months Okay, so he does two events a year um, okay. with almost no no preparation, no communication. Mm -hmm. He just yeah, shows up and disappears. Yeah. So no. and I'm afraid that we have that it's really hard. I mean, if we want to declare people inactive, we need to have criteria exactly. to measure activity. And oh, we could do this with badges. <laughs> Why, not? Why not? Yeah, yeah. that's a solution. That's a proper solution. But uh, I mean, a guy that uh, an ambassador that is, is not uh, is not not organizing participating participating in an event for two years, I think that he's an inactive ambassador. I mean, for example, you see you see in Greece. I want I, I want I want your opinion. You see in Greece, we have nine ambassadors, right? Nine ambassadors, which is a really high number for Greece. And nowadays we're not really active enough. We just have released events like every six months. Do you think that I, for me it's a really high number of ambassadors for the, the events that we're doing? From the nine ambassadors, only only three and four of them are or 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 participating in the events, which is not really great. For, it's not really good for me. It's not that I'm not I will believe them all. But <laughs> maybe I won't. But okay. But the thing is that we have we have to I don't know to uh, wake them up to solve them. A warning that our believing is going to be a shock for them, not for the Greeks, or for everyone. Well, generally, I think you can. I mean, they have gone through the mentoring process exactly, and they have achieved something. They have achieved the membership in the in the group, and I think you cannot revoke that. Maybe you can declare that an inactive or something, mm -hmm. but like for example a packager, if if he this mm -hmm. we take away his his packages from him and somebody else takes yeah. care of them, but we don't uh, revoke his his group membership uh, as a packager. Yeah, he's still a packager. Yes, he doesn't lose his right to package stuff. Okay. Oh, fair enough. But. Uh, you are talking about someone who does want to be an ambassador, but probably doesn't have time or whatever. And also, you have people who are no longer interested. And so, basically, if you send email once a year, like, hey, hey, man, you still want to be an ambassador? Click this link and you. No, ambassador please don't. Email. We had this. We had this in the past before you were there. We, there was like, yeah. um, and it was totally out of control. <laughs> somebody, <laughs> no, somebody was. Um, Wrote an email like, um, please reply to this email if you are still active. Yeah, yeah. I do it <laughs> and people just I clicked that. on reply, and re that, that email was on the ambassadors list. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and people just clicked on reply, uh, reply, and reply to ambassadors list. Yeah, I'm still alive. I'm still around. And then like totally, you only had these emails on the list. And in fact. What they had achieved was the opposite, because at some point Jörg said, "Stop this discussion. We don't want this on the list. You're filtering up all the lists, and people still keep replying." And actually, at that point, they have re they they um, prove that they are not reading the ambassadors list. Otherwise, they know knew that they should were were supposed to no longer reply. <laughs> so maybe we should send out a, a an email. Please reply if you want to continue to be an ambassador because then they will not do anything. But what's the, what's the real problem here? Like having a long list of ambassadors in a country is not the problem itself. So what's what's the problem with, with well, the list? Like? I, I think we if maybe we can. I mean, the, the list in the wiki is generated by a script that queries fast, and we, it should be pretty easy to query. If the user is is active, stage is active, inactive, it's actually named active and inactive and fast. If you don't have the password change, then they don't get removed from the list if they become inactive. No, they don't. But we can change the script that generates the list. So there are you always sure some drops in in numbers of members uh, from time to time. I thought it was um, a list of all the the manual. Manual. This is on the part. I thought it's the agency wiki category. No, no. If you open this page, it says please don't add a 
that the three key plane is created by script. Not yet. I, I think we, uh, yes, we had we had some we had numbers dropping. I but I think the, the cleanup is, is something manual that uh, the the pharma people trigger. Well, the show, manual process. Showing an active inactive status. A good start. I mean, the problem with having a list that it's not accurate is that if I'm a contributor, a new contributor, and I want to communicate with an ambassador in my country to ask them something about the project, I may communicate with an ambassador that's no longer active and get no answer. So, having something like if someone is inactive or haven't, uh, hasn't logged into class for like a year, could be. Okay. Yeah. That, that's a pretty. Either we delete them from the list or we, we have active and inactive or just yes. yeah, inactive as so a so they can become, become the unactive ambassadors. <laughs> oh, that's a nice term. <laughs> well, another thing that we need to consider is the fact that if someone has been an ambassador and has done nothing in a year, do they have the knowledge to go out and talk to people about the project after that year or two years or however long period? I think, I mean, it depends. They probably cannot, maybe they cannot tell you what's new in Fedora 19, but they still uh, know our core values and foundations. Are you sure? Yes. How do you know? I know all of them. No, I know most of them. So um, the ones I know. Um, Do you know the inactive Greek one? <laughs> no. <laughs> How do you know they are going to go out and do their job in a year from now? Well, but they're obviously not doing a good job now. So no, the no, they're not. Time. And that's my point here is that we need to consider the fact that there are times when uh, you can set, you need to set up criteria for what an ambassador is, what they are supposed to be doing, and if they don't follow these criteria, they might be good enough mm -hmm. for the project. I mean, the worst thing that could happen is that they go out and talk about uh, a product that is more along the way it needs. If, if I go out and talk about four or five, is that going to help the project? Because there are so many changes. Well, I don't think that the ambassadors are not really marketing uh, every release or so. No, no, and I, I don't mean the release specific, but the project as itself, the way that it worked in, let's say, Fedora 4, is completely different from what it works now. Back in Fedora 4, it was a Red Hat controlled, Red Hat managed system. If you now have a, 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 an ambassador that goes out and says, yeah, it's run by Red Hat, but we do have uh, open contri contributors, they are not telling the truth. They are not going out there and telling what we want them to say. Mm. And so uh, I, think, I think it's somewhat dangerous to say that once you become an uh, ambassador, you don't have to do anything for 10 years, and then you can go out and talk about it. Okay, so I'm inactive, but I'm still an ambassador. I put that in my CV, I put that on my business card, and yeah, I'm speaking for Fedora now. They don't know I'm inactive. Um, there, well, there's, there's a different, there, you, I think we are mixing up some problems here, like, for example, um, business cards. We have a rule for that. You are not allowed to make business cards with the type of Fedora ambassadors, mm -hmm. of course. That's has something to do with the trademark guidelines. We don't allow personalized I items. For example, I, I could make this blue uh, ambassador shirt with my name on it. That's not allowed. So um, yeah, we couldn't make it. But even if I if I got hold of it, uh, if I had a shirt I could wear it ten years from now, to say yeah, I'm an ambassador shirt with my shirt. Yeah, I think what you're saying is that we may know who the inactive part, but. If I go to an event and talk about Fedora, they don't know I'm inactive. No. So, I mean, yeah, but I don't see this danger because if they are inactive, they won't go to an event. Yeah. And even you can go to the event and talk about Fedora even if you are not a Fedora ambassador at all. Yes. And if, if that, I mean, it's a corner case. If somebody really goes, has been inactive for like, say, 10 years and goes to an event, 
Um, of course, he doesn't represent, he represents Fedora from 10 years ago. Right. But I think, first of all, that's a quarter case. And even if it happens, having an ambassador there is better than having no ambassador. I'm actually mm. not sure about mm. that. Wrong sure information that, yeah. is, is worse than no information. I don't but think they can be fundamentally wrong. Like oh, well, I agree with uh, uh, but what, what you're saying about this idea yeah, that, you know, ambassadors that haven't logged in in the past, at least in one year, can be declared, at least the United States is not anymore. Um, yeah, and if you log <coughs> again, if, if you if we should be coming again. Yeah, but to be honest, um, that's a pretty low-hanging fruit. I mean, you could have somebody logging into CAS once a year for 10 years. Yeah, yeah, but uh, <laughs> this way they at least show <laughs> or indicate that they care, care oh, at the least. Status at least. <laughs> but I mean, think would it be better to say that an ambassador has to go to a, 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 or organize or go to an event once every five years or so, or there's however a long period you uh, want? We, we had this discussion going on for years and years. And, and you haven't made a decision, and that's the part of the problem. No, we. <laughs> Agreed. Several councils agreed that you that we cannot make any criteria. But it's coming up and up again because people want criteria. Yes, but I think the people who want criteria are um, a minority. Like there's a pretty wide consensus that we don't want this inactive, active thing. That we don't want strict criteria, like three events in five years or so. Um, <coughs> and frankly speaking, I'm, so I mean, the only thing I really can imagine is, is having the CAS account uh, active, inactive thing, yeah. and I'm having sorry. this this somehow represented in on the country list wiki page. Can we do that? That is something we can actually implement on a technical level pretty easily. But other than that, the topic is, is, is okay, okay, yeah. Like yeah. checking if someone has attended an event in like two mm -hmm. years or something would be complicated. But it's, uh, mm -hmm. I spoke with Alejandro from Latin America and he said, for example, for Brazil it's even a bigger problem because they've got like 40 ambassadors in Brazil and like 30, 35 of them are in mm -hmm. which is already quite. Weird. Yeah. Uh, can we do the? Okay. Well, then, <coughs> that is actually something that has that correlates with my talk that I'm going to give in a few minutes. No, in twelve. <laughs> no, it's, it's twelve, I think. Yeah. 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 Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. 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 But anyway, um, that yeah. correlates with my uh, talk. I mean, if it turns out, I mean. If we do the, sen the census, and it turns out that we have countries where we have a huge difference between number of ambassadors on paper and number of actual active ambassadors, uh, like in Brazil, like 35 versus 5, or <coughs> I agree that is a problem, and then we should probably put it up on the agenda again. But currently, I mean, I, I'm looking at this problem with my European hat on. Right. In Europe, we don't have that problem. Right. I mean, I mean, I, I totally agree. Uh, in in Western Europe or in, in the Central Europe area, uh, region, I can imagine that there is not no such problem because we have a very active community. I think the problem is in the smaller countries where the regions aren't so very active because it's a very small community. Yeah. Or we That's where the problems arise. I mean, I know we have this problem, for example, say in India. Yeah. Uh, that's why we invented the mentoring process uh, to, to raise the bar, mm -hmm. because there are many people who just want the title for the right. ambassadors for their CV. Right, <laughs> exactly. Um, for India, for and actually the, the criteria for Indian uh, uh, ambassadors are higher than for other people, just because right. we have so uh, many people I understand. applying. So, um, <laughs> yeah, maybe that, this is a local problem. Um, if we figure out it is a problem, then we need to address it again. Well, so, so we can actually, you have um, a two-tier uh, system where uh, 
when a country become more active, it phases out of a more structured process of dealing with the ambassadors, more like what you are experiencing in, in Germany and, and in Europe as a whole. Uh, whereas like Greece, for example, they would have uh, a more strict rule that says that if you haven't done anything in X year, you're removed from the list and you have to go through the mentoring program again. No. Well, I'm not sure if I want to have strict criteria. I mean, I, I agree that we ha need to have, or that it's that we might have different levels. Well, in when I say countries. strict, I mean stricter. Yeah, than I mean, no um, criteria. Well, what I mean is, I don't want formal criteria, like number of events or something. That's something where I actually would like to trust the mentors to make a decision. I mean, I trust you to know your Greek community, to know your Greek uh, ambassadors, and say. This guy hasn't done anything, or like maybe we, we need to uh, have two people just agree, two mentors agree that he should be uh, declared inactive. Exactly. That's, that's a way to, 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 to make a difference about active and inactive, to address the mentors and say, hi guys, please correct your your mentees and say, and set the start. I mean, but is this uh, a well known fact among mentors? Is this part of their job to check their mentees every? No. I mean, I'm an ambassador for three years and I haven't talked to my mentor for three years. Who was your mentor? Uh, Robert. I mean, he, I have a great experience with him during the mentorship process, but after that, we never talk. That's he doesn't know if I'm active or inactive. Yeah. That's actually one thing we. We wanted to change, and we, we discussed that at the top in Rheinfeld last year, that we want to have some, within the first year at least, the mentor should take care of his, of his mentee, like, like get in touch by email, how are you doing, um, and so on. Yeah. We don't, we are not doing that. Yeah, I do, I do, but, I mean, no, no one else. Not no one else. I don't know. Some do, some, some do, yeah, some, some don't. Um, make a rule for everyone. Well, the thing is that I I don't think that it should be a job of mentor. I think the, the but because you've got too, too few of them, I think the, someone else in the community, like, and those people could be candidates for men, mentors later. If it's, if it's takes a, an ambassador who is like, with the project for like over a year, then he can he can be like the peer for ambassadors that finish the mentoring process, and then he uh, like gets them and he makes sure that those people have some agenda for the first first year they attend the big one like the event. But it doesn't have to be done the, by the mentors because I think they've got enough work with mentoring people. It could be done by someone who is not that experienced, but experienced enough to help uh, people settle down. In so the individual, this community, yeah. maybe, especially if it's a small community, like for example the big one, or uh, some community <coughs> members they can help, like your program, but we have to not not to fear everyone and everyone. I guess we have to fear them with uh, the mm -hmm. guys, the community leader, for example. Yeah. Or oh, <laughs> yeah. no, my time is up. Yeah, you're it's, over. It's, it's, yeah, I'm over. Right. It's your time. At that point, we just tell us. You can continue it later in my yeah, talk. I think we have or two or two talks now, right? Yes, yes. And then after that, I have, he gives his one, and uh, my kind of correlates. We can then continue the discussion yes, after. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, I just want to, to ask you if uh, we can work on the mock up, if we can work on the user interface of the countries. What about that? Uh, yeah. Well, I like that the, the, the Fedora community website is it's like fairly outdated. That's not a good start for people. Yeah, but I'm not sure if it makes makes sense to discuss stuff. I mean, we need to make we need to have people who actually make stuff happen because it was already discussed yesterday. Um, I need to do something about the page. Uh, this, this is a great idea. Um, need, I think everyone agrees. 
Is the Federal Communities website linked from our main website? I'm not sure. Yes, there is one link at the front of the I'm proposing the mock-up and I'm willing to run it. No, no worries about that. I'm willing to run it and see. Well, then, so. I think it's a great idea. I just yeah, the problem here is to make it to do it. Yeah, I, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? Yeah, I know. Awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Really, you can just figure out here the A dot R. Yeah, the code is extremely outdated. That's extremely embarrassing um, because we probably shouldn't link that page. I mean, it's. Uh, yeah. Thank you. 